Memcache, Redis, DynamoDB, Cosmos DB, they are all key value stores. However, are they all the same? They are not. And if you are building a scalable system, there's something you should know before picking one of those. At their core, key value stores are pretty simple. They basically store a key and a value, like a giant hash table. But where things become interesting is by the fact that they handle data distribution, consistency, availability in widely different ways. And this is where the cap theorem comes in. I have a deep dive on the cap theorem that I will link somewhere in the top, but let's do the TLDR version of it. In the cap theorem, you have three important parts. You have consistency, availability, and partition totalness. What they mean? Consistency means that if you try to read data, you will always get the most recent version of the data or an error. If you go with availability, it means that you always get a response. Doesn't mean that it is the most recent version of the data. And the partition tolerance is related if the system keeps working when there's a network problem between the nodes. But the important part is that you can only pick two of those. The system can be consistent and partition tolerant, can be available and partition tolerant. It can be all the three at the same time. So as you can see, there's important decisions involved here. And you need to decide if you want your system to be consistent, if you want the system to have that availability. And when you decide that for a given use case, the decision that you take to pick a key value store, it's quite important because the key value stores technologies itself, they are designed for one of those scenarios. So let's go one by one and see key value store technologies that are great for that scenario. Let's start with those that favor consistency and partition tolerance. You can imagine those as a team of synchronized swimmers, and they need to move all together with this precision of movements that look like they are all one. That's the idea that we want here. We want that everyone evolves together in order to make sure that the system is consistent. And use case of that would be an, in a financial system where you have strict requirements regarding consistency. And examples of technologies that you can use in this model are things like MongoDB when you configure it with strong consistency. On the flip side, we have AP stores, availability and partition tolerance. An analogy to explain this would be if you imagine, for example, a team of reporters of a news channel. So they are all in the field to report something that is happening. And when you connect to one of them, they might not know the most recent news, but they always have something to report. So they have something, a story to tell. Doesn't mean that they all know the same story yet, but they have something to add to the story. And use case of this is something like social media, where something like eventual consistency makes a lot of sense. And what types of technologies can play a role here? Technologies like Cassandra or Aerospike can be a great tool for that. But also, we have some technologies that can play different types of roles depending on the way that you set up them. I call them the flexible stores. So in those type of stores, usually you can configure the way that you want the cap theorem to to play a role. And the good examples of that are those two strong ones that you can find on AWS and on Azure. I'm talking about DynamoDB on AWS and Cosmos DB on Azure. Those two technologies are great data stores that you can adjust and define different data models and different properties, different settings in order to have a system more consistent or more available. So they are not designed for one of those particular scenarios. However, they are like chameleons. They can adapt to different types of scenarios. What makes them extremely interesting since, as I explained on that video that I linked before, often we don't want the whole system to be either available or either consistent. It depends on the use case, it depends on the functionality, and there's a lot of trade-offs involved. There's one combination that we didn't address yet. That is when we pick consistency and availability together. That is a tricky one, because if we want a system that has multiple nodes in a network, a distributed system, will need to pick the partition tolerance. However, we have the other scenario, the scenario where we have a single host or single node, whatever you want to call it. For example, if you have a system running on your device, 
if you have something running on your mobile phone, something running on IoT device. On those type of scenarios, you can go with consistency and availability, knowing that you can scale the system. And here is where things like Memcache or Redis with a, a single node configuration can work quite well. But keep in mind that picking the correct data store is not only about the Captherium, there's other things involved. For example, the data model, the query capabilities. Do you want to perform complex queries on top of it? That's something that you should see if the technology is capable of that or not. What's the performance requirements? Do you have more reads or more writes? You might take a look into operational aspects. For example, you want to take a look into backups, management, observability. With all that in mind, there's some typical use cases for different technologies. One cool thing about many of those options that I mentioned before is that if you go to the technology page, you can find a set of use cases where the technology shines because often they are designed for a given type of scenario. They might be designed for financial systems. They might be designed for distributed social networks and you will find the use cases there. And that is a leading indicator if that is a match with what you are looking for or not. However, let me give you a quick glance of types of things that you might be looking for. For example, are you looking for a caching layer on top of your technology? For example, imagine that you want to cache the user profile of your social network. Something like Redis might be a good option for that. Are you looking for real-time analytics? There, something like Aerospike might be a great option. Do you want to build an e-commerce shopping cart? Maybe something like DynamoDB. Or if you are building something in the Internet of Things space and you want to ingest the data coming from the several devices that you have in the network, maybe something like Cassandra or InfluxDB might be a great option for that. So as you can see, there are several types of technologies available and they tend to specialize in different types of scenarios. That's why it's important to understand the CAP theorem. And if you want to understand in depth the CAP theorem, you want to watch this video right here, where I explain why it's so important to build distributed systems.